This is Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. What you are about to hear is not chum. This is Wretched Radio. There are some discernment ministries. We're not one of them because, frankly, we're not a discernment ministry. (laughs) I like to think we're a gospel ministry, and we do some discerning because we're all supposed to. But this is not a program dedicated to seeking, finding, and trashing everything that we disagree with. And so it is. What you're about to hear is not chum. This didn't get thrown into the water and we circled around it like sharks hoping to devour a good meal or a good ministry. We do not take joy in sharing what you are about to hear. It was just last week, providentially, that we were talking on this here wretched radio program about the issue of, now just hang in there with me for a minute, my continuationist friends, that when you say that God is still speaking, that all of the gifts are in place, they are active today, that theological position has always demonstrated an immediate lurching to the left. That, that, that's, that's where it goes. And I've said things like, okay, so maybe it's not going to be this generation of continuationists, but it will be the next generation. I was wrong about that. I was right about continuationism inevitably leads to wackiness, the, the, the kooky stuff that we talk about. For instance, the New Apostolic Reformation, the glory glitter, the angel feathers, uh, just absolute anarchy, prophetic messages, utterances, divine impressions, all of these, these things that are so out of control in so many circles, it is inevitable that continuationists will go there. It, it has to. I was right about that, wrong about how long it would take. Let me share with you a clip of two men. One is Sean Boltz. He's a wackadoodle from Bethel Church. And by the way, I know this for sure. This man is never hungry for a meal. It's not that he's all that skinny. It's just that he's constantly swallowing his words. And he must be stuffed, so it's a little hard to understand him. Nevertheless, he's going to be sharing his divine impressions. And then the person who put this video together online, Joey, do you have the name so we can give credit where credit is due, the name of the ministry who put this together? I will look it back up. All righty. Matt Chandler. And so what this fellow did was, here's Sean Boltz of Bethel talking about divine impressions, God laying something in their heart and mind, and then approaching somebody to tell them about it. And you're going to hear an antiphonal Sean Boltz, Matt Chandler, from the ministry heterodox research initiative that's exactly what i thought it was here is sean bolts i can go up to like bethel my you know i call it my mother church i okay so he goes to bethel his mother church he's a bethelite and, um, many of you were asking the question i saw it going through the comments and also online here um, people were asking the questions how do i start this and you start this again on ramp of encouragement and then just trusting that those thoughts or those those feelings that you're getting, those impressions that you're getting uh, are from God. And it could just be a picture that you translate something from God's heart for. So that's all I had, had nothing else. Just heard, had a, a spiritual mental impression of Vampire Squad. So I said, does Vampire Squad mean something to you? And she said, Lord, what would you want me to encourage Danny with? And then I quiet again, trying to listen. And then automatically in my head, there's a picture of a ship, a pirate ship. And then there's, uh, there, there's like cannons on the pirate ship, and there's a shark chasing the pirate ship. Now, at that point, you're like, nope, no. They're talking about the same thing. While there may or may not be nuances between the two, Sean Boltz is talking about divine impressions. God gives you a picture in your mind, then you approach that person and say, here's the picture. In his case, it was Vampire Squad. For Matt Chandler, and thinking about a buddy from church, it was a pirate ship with cannons and a shark chasing it. And you then are supposed to take that divine impression, it feels weird, but step out in faith and then tell the person that you're talking to about your divine impression and then voila, watch. Well, quite honestly, I don't know what the point of any of this is, frankly. What is this divine impression? Uh, Divine, okay, Tony, I've been listening to God, waiting for a picture, and here's what I've got. I've got an old fashioned TV screen and inside of it, the Flintstones are playing. So I just want to lay that out there for you. My See, I think it, I keep thinking it's like 
Like John Byrne. Fine impression. Doing his no. impression of no. God. Mm-mm. This, this is getting this impression, sharing it. To what end? I don't know. But listen to the similarities of a Bethelite and Matt Chandler. They're just, I mean, they don't know that God can speak through me. And so if I'm sharing with them something, it becomes profound after I've taken the risk. It's different that you can't please God without faith. That faith Listen to the word. You got to risk it. Got to risk it. It's the only thing that pleases God. And faith is an expression of God's love. So what I'm asking you to do is be brave. Ask, hear, step out, approach, and just say, hey, while I was praying, the Lord brought you to my mind. And, and even if it sounds crazy to you, just trust him. Step out in faith. Do you hear the similarities? Yeah, I'm going to start out talking about, I was sitting next to a stranger on a plane who happened to be a flight attendant, flight attendant personnel. And I kept looking at her over and over and over. And finally, I said, uh, can I ask you a question? She's like, yeah. And I'm like, what do you do in life? And she told me she's a flight attendant. I could kind of tell by her outfit. But I said, what else? What else is, and she's like, well, I'm a mom and I love my kids. And tell me about that. And then I said, can I, can I, share a word with you like this is a, a, a well let me simply say it how i said it i'm having a spiritual experience i'm a christian and i believe that god speaks to us can i share a spiritual impression with you and she's like okay a spiritual impression because it's not all that clear it's a bit fuzzy now here's what we should be listening for in this presentation what was the result what happened apparently nothing he tells the divine impression Ooh ah you're a christian you sound like a psychic but what's the point of this is this teaching more about Jesus to talk about Vampire Squad? Yeah. And so I said, um, does the word Vampire Squad mean anything to you? Now picture that. I'm sitting next to a stranger having a spiritual experience for such, I mean, Vampire Squad. That sounds like even something demonic or something weird. But I felt like God said, bring up the Vampire Squad to her. So that's all I had. Had nothing else. Just her, had a, a spiritual this mental is impression amazing. of Vampire Squad. So I said, does Vampire Squad mean something to you? And she said, Oh my gosh, how do you know about this? And I said, I'm telling you, I don't know anything. I'm a Christian. I heard the word Vampire Squad. She said, that's the name that me and my group of girlfriends had when we were in high school. Ooh, ah. And? I mean, assuming this story is true, what, what's, what's the result? What's the gain? How is God glorified in this? Where's the preaching that should be connected to it if this actually happens? You just heard Sean Boltz here now, Matt Chandler. I saw Danny Spencer over here, and I love him. And so I'm just going to use you, Danny. Say I'm praying in the morning, I'm just like, Lord, just bring me somebody to encourage us. I want to be used by you. I want to pursue love. I want to push out darkness. I want to expose the lies of the enemy. And I want to use my mouth to build up your sons and daughters. And he puts Danny Spencer in my mind. How do you know? And then I don't do that. Well, is that me? Is that, gosh, Danny texted me earlier this week. So am I, is that bad chicken? Is that what, well, you know, no. Okay, so th that couldn't be that. It must be from God. Really? How do we know this? Answer, we don't. Okay, Danny, let's do it. Lord, what would you want me to encourage Danny with? And then I quiet again, trying to listen, and then automatically in my head, there's a picture of a ship, a pirate ship. And then there's, uh, there, there's like cannons on the pirate ship, and there's a shark chasing the pirate ship. Now at that point, you're like, nope, no. <laughs> not gonna happen right and here's what i want you to do i want you to just step out and you can even admit in like faith. we're growing together and we're gonna fail and it's gonna get weird it's gonna be awesome well actually so far just weird nothing awesome about <laughs> this because we haven't seen any fruit from this particular endeavor furthermore it's just not biblical divine impressions i'm telling you i closed my eyes thinking about tony and i saw a tv screen with the flintstones playing in it and can I say that's a divine? He said it's going to be weird. It's, we're going to goof up. In other words, they aren't all divine impressions. They are just thoughts or bad chicken. Like, I'm just going to go to Danny, and I'm going to be like, hey, brother, you heard my sermon. I was praying. Danny, it was a pirate ship. It's a shark chasing it cannons i'm not going to interpret that for him i'm not going to be like what i think that means is well that's what a prophet would do that maybe you're stealing some stuff from people and jesus is the shark and you know you know why 
Because if you did the interpretation, you'd be revealed as a fraud most times. You need to repair. Let them come up I'm with something. I'm not going to interpret that for them. I'm just going to go. And in a great deal of humility, I'm just going to be, does that make any sense to you? And, and it's perfectly okay to go, that doesn't make any sense at all. But here's what we need to be. But thank you for being so bold uh, as to step into what the Holy Spirit prompted you to step into. I'm proud well, of apparently you he didn't. having the courage to do that. Apparently the Holy Spirit didn't because it didn't go anywhere. Charisma Magazine picked this up with a headline, Matt, Preach, Matt Chandler preaches on prophesying for 42 straight minutes. A connected article that said Matt Chandler partnering with Francis Chan and banning Liebscher. He's from Jesus Culture, from Bethel Church, pastor there, partnering for an event. That was also promoted in Charisma Magazine. Am I thrilled to share that with you? No, I'm not. Was it inevitable? I'm afraid it was. This is Wretched Radio.